What up, brothers? Time to get it at the Subaru some more. And what we got going on today is I pulled the gauge pod cluster off the silver Subaru, said cluster, with the top on and everything. It's kind of a wiring mess. But the reason we are doing this is for this guy over here, air fuel gauge, because I want to properly be able to read it. I don't trust the one that's in the car, because when you're in power, it just goes to like 11.25 and it's not moving anywhere. So I'm thinking it's just giving me a readout. It's not actually giving me the actual air fuel ratio and I wanna make sure this thing's running healthy because we're gonna be going back to the track again here soon and I don't wanna blow it up again. So what it's gonna do is replace the clock in here. So this just pries up. So we either use a plastic, either a screwdriver, I put a rag around it or you got these like plastic pries and you just pry up on this bad boy like so. And that just pops up. And then unplug this bad boy. So I'm skipping some steps here and not telling you what's good. The boost gauge that comes on the column, gotta take that off. In order to get this stuff off, you couldn't, if I really wanna get this completely out, you see how long these stems are. They get bolted or screwed in on these right here on both sides. And the bottom cover has a single screw that goes into this hole here and everything's Phillips. So you undo the Phillips on here, the bottom pops off, it clips together, and then this also clips in the top, but you gotta unbolt it there, like I was saying, unscrew it there. And once you get this up, uh, I took the, obviously the cover off of the gauges and I was able to get in here with a stub nose screwdriver to actually get that gauge off and so that's how you get into there. But if you want to take this completely off, then you're gonna to have to take the gauge cluster out so that you can actually pull this all the way out. Because these, uh, these are way too long to get past the steering wheel and all that, even with the wheel all the way down. We got Chippy J over there picking up the phone. I got the gauge out. I So that I cut the boost reference line and I cut the wiring because uh, it's mechanical. So all you use is this hose off of it to run this gauge. The rest of it's just for lights. So I know that all I'm gonna do is run the hose and the wiring from this up to the gauge pod so that I can get the lights and power up to the gauge pod for that way. So what I'm gonna do, and if I can get up in here, show you guys. You just take the boost reference line, have somebody up there to view where it's coming through at, and I'm gonna take this hose here, tape these wires to it, and then stuff it up in there, and then we'll have all our wiring up there. All right, so we got fished up here with our wires and tape. The one fell out, but I was able to fish that up without any too big of problems. So now, I just gotta get the air fuel stuff squared away. Now, for this vehicle, there's no oil pressure sensor on it. All it is is just a light. So I'm gonna have to put a different sending unit in it so that I can actually have the oil pressure work correctly. Because right now it's just, it's gonna be there but it's not gonna function. But I would like to actually see what my oil pressure is. So for now we're just gonna do the air fuel ratio gauge and obviously the boost. And we'll do the, the oil pressure on a different one. All right, so the wire that's coming out for the original boost solenoid for the light is only actuated with the light switch, naturally. Um, now I do have this electronic boost uh, sending unit. Now this will come, if you get a Pro Sport gauge, it'll come with it if you want the electrical style. It's pretty tough getting this hose on to the nipple here though. Anytime you're doing like rubber hoses and whatnot, I always use WD-40, it makes everything slide on a hell of a lot nicer. And then you have, obviously the red and black are power and ground, and then the white is the reference, the boost reference, and on the gauge, it's the green wire that you wanna wire it to. And I'll show you again once I wire everything up. But the one I'm gonna to have to do for the ignition switch, for, so for the original clock connector, I'm gonna to have to use this uh, yellow and blue wire. I'm gonna to have to cut and get into that, because that'll be my ignition switch, so that when I turn the ignition on, all the lights for, well, all the lights and the gauges will work with the ignition on. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that splice out real quick and get things going. All right, so I'm starting the wiring process. I'm putting all the reds uh, from the Pro Sport gauges, the oranges go in it as well, because I don't really care to have it 
turn amber when I turn the light switch on. I just want it to be on all the time. So I'm just wiring them hot all the time. Red with that, red with the air fuel ratio gauge. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the black and then ground it by the ground from the original boost uh, lighting. And then I'm gonna get the power, the switch power on the ignition from here like I was talking about. All right guys, so I got it all wired up. It's a bit of a rat's nest, but I'm just, I'm gonna have to be taking it back out anyway to actually wire the air fuel. I'm just setting this up for today. And what I ended up doing is just wiring, obviously the constant hot, you gotta have the red for the constant hot. And then the other two, you have a white wire and an orange wire. The white wire makes it a white light. The orange wire makes it an amber colored gauge. And so I prefer white gauges just because the cluster's already red and I feel like it would just be too much red in the car. So I wired just the whites. I don't really care about switching the other one for an amber, for like a light switch or whatever. So I just wired that. Obviously we got the air fuel ratio wired for voltage, but we don't have the sensor hooked up or anything. So that's why it's giving us that air. But at least for now I'll have that. I got the boost gauge wired up and it's actually working. I just ran the car a second ago here just to make sure everything was functioning properly and it does. Obviously, like I said before, the oil pressure gauge isn't gonna work until I get the right sending unit so that I can wire that up. So again, I'm gonna be pulling that apart again on that. But uh, at least for now, we got the gauge pod in there. I just gotta screw it down the sides. Now, I don't know, this came with the silver car where this actual housing came from, but it came with these J clips and that sit in on this slot and have a hole and then you can screw it on here. And then this guy just kinda, uh, I'm sorry, wrong one. It clips into these slots here to hold it in place for the, the cover. And like I said, I don't know where it came from. It's definitely not a Cobb unit. Um, who knows, it's some new name that I had that it got with it. But for now it works, it's free, I already own it. So I'm gonna put it in the car. So now it's time for the sensor. We're putting that in place. So with this exhaust, the best way to get an air fuel ratio, a wide band to read correctly, is it can't be behind a catalytic converter. So what we wanna do is have it behind a cat. If you don't have that choice, then you're just gonna to have to put it behind one. But the whole point with this AEM sensor is they say 18 inches behind either the heads, if it's non-turbo, excuse me, or 18 inches or 14 inches. Hold on, let me, let me clarify before I give you some false information here, people. It's 18 inches, sorry. Yes, 18 inches away from the turbo, after the turbo. And the way that you want to put it in is not at an angle. You don't want it perpendicular because then it'll overheat and you don't want it level or especially down like this because then it collects all the water coming through the exhaust when it's first fired up and it'll ruin the sensor that way. So you want to have it, they're saying like 10 degrees above flat, which this bung that I have in here already in this exhaust is gonna work perfectly. It's the downstream O2 sensor. And I just took the, out, the downstream out because of the tune that I have on it. It's already not using it anyway. So I'm gonna be using this bung. But if not, the sensor itself actually comes with a bung that you can weld in. And basically what I would do is just drill it out and use one of those step bits that opens up bigger and bigger as you drill deeper to get to the right size and then weld that up on the exhaust. So you put it in a good spot. So I'm gonna use that spot and then we'll get upstairs and do some more wiring. One thing when it comes to putting an O2 sensor in is you always wanna make sure that it has some anti-seize on the threads because when it comes to bringing it back out, it'll be way easier and it won't get so jammed up and you won't have to heat it and get crazy with it. But uh, most of the sensors come with it nowadays, I'm noticing, so you don't necessarily have to put it on, but just make sure that it has it on there. Otherwise, you won't have fun taking it back off next time. All right, so I'm wiring the O2 wiring through the firewall, through this boot here. Cut a little slit with a razor blade. Super simple. Now, once I'm done with that, I'm definitely going to cut. Or sorry, yeah, I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna put a little piece of tape and really seal that up. And now here, I'm just gonna throw this wiring down here use whatever I need and then I'm gonna tuck the excess in up here under the dash so it looks nice and tidy all right so if you look sensors in there obviously what I'm doing is routing under the back side of the trans mount here and I'm running it up along the side of the transmission and I stuffed the wire behind 
that sensor on the side of the trans so it keeps it all nice and tight up against the side of the trans away from the exhaust the way I want to. And obviously I have all this extra, but like I was saying, I'm gonna put it up under the dash and coil it that way. And then I'll show you how I wrap it up on the top here to keep it further away from the exhaust because there's still a little bit of routing I gotta do up there. All right, I got it all tucked up nice now. I do have it zip tied to the sensor to make sure that it doesn't come out from around it. And then I have it running behind here, as you can see on the AC lines, have it zip tied to the low side. Low side never gets hot, high side does, but it only goes to about, you know, 200 degrees at the most. And then I have it zip tied to the brake line here and going into the boot. Now let's go into the car and see what kind of situation we're dealing with. Now it's hanging out down here, tucked under somewhere. I was just stuffing it through so I have no idea where this is actually at. And there's a lot of it in, there it is. It's a lot of it in here, which is no big deal. I just want to make sure I can coil it all up and then stuff it up in there. So now I just gotta take the gauge cluster back out. Since it's been a few days since I recorded the last one. Um, and let me pull that out and show you the rest. One thing I did make a mistake of doing is I wired the power for the gauges to the clock, which is not a bad thing. But as you know, when you turn the lights on, the clock dims. So, which means voltage also gets cut short. So the gauges are on. And when I turn on the lights, the gauges go out because it's not enough voltage to actually power them. So I'm gonna have to rewire them. Either that or it's just my stealth mode, you know, turn the lights off. If I want the gauges to work, see all the cool stuff, yeah. All right, so all I did was feed the wire from down here. Got my hand down in that hole back there and kind of fished it in. It's not too difficult as long as you have both hands, which it's not a big deal. So I just plugged it in. I haven't done anything except for just plugging in and what you guys have seen already. So now we're getting a display here saying heat. Wow, you can see how low the voltage is on here. Now you can see how much more voltage this gauge is actually taken away from the system. So now, uh, yeah, okay. So we're definitely gonna have to get a different hot source because it's definitely robbing a lot of it. So we are gonna do that right now before we go anywhere else. So after thinking about it and what I had as far as hots around here that are a switch ignition hot, I'm gonna use the radio because it definitely has a bigger wire that will be able to draw more amps through it. I mean, these gauges don't take a lot of amps to begin with to run, but uh, it's definitely better than the clock and then we won't have that dimming function as long as it's not the light function wire that I grab off it. Face plate, if you're curious, pry down under here first. Definitely, if you don't have like plastic pry tools, just use a screwdriver and put a little rag around it or something just so you don't dog everything up. But I definitely pry under here first and it pops that part out. And then I come up around the sides and pop it out over here. And the same thing on the other side. And then it comes right off. Then you just got six screws. There's two, the one way back there. These two up here, same thing on the other side. Comes out and we'll get to the wiring here in a minute. All right, so I got my little test light here. Got the other end plugged to the ground, so obviously I can read hots. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, I got the radio out, got it unplugged here, and I'm just gonna cycle the key and start seeing which one is gonna be my trigger hot. I'm sure the red is probably my constant, but I don't know that, but here, let's try it out. After probing this, these connectors, they have a very small terminal hole, so one little trick I like to use is with a test light, with the test light, get a little paper clip, and wrap it around it like a snake and then you can get into smaller terminals with this guy so that you can test it because I'm not very confident that I'm all the way in it so I just want to make sure so there's no guesswork on whether I'm actually hitting the right wires and whether they're actually giving me the reading that I'm looking for so and I do this with a power probe too if I'm looking for uh, voltages and amperage and all that good stuff so I'm gonna do my best here Ooh, look at that we got a good angle all right so the terminal I'm in here I got this thing plugged into it and then here I'm gonna cycle the key now the light light lets up back here it is the white with red dots on it that is the one that we need to use so I'm gonna tap into that and then wire a new wire you know get a T joint here and then wire it up into the back side for all the gauges up here alright so what I did is just cut the wire obviously and then just twisted these two together, the red and the white coming from the harness side, 
and then it really literally just drops right down into there and now I'm just gonna find the length that I want cut it wherever and then wire it to the gauges so what I had to do here is grab the ground also off the radio because little did I know the power source or should I say the way the clock dims is not by voltage it's actually by the ground so the ground that I was grabbing from the clock plug is actually what was causing the gauges to go out when I turned the lights on so now I have my ground and my hot both grabbed off of the radio itself so now when I turn everything on my lights on and oh my god look at that lights are on out there gauges are well maybe just turn this light off so you can see it a little better oh my god there we go so now everything's working right I still don't know why my boost gauge is stuck at high because it was working before and I'm wondering if possible that maybe the constant on and off of the lights may have shorted it out somehow and cause it to read high I don't know because uh, it doesn't work like it's supposed to and I double checked my wiring and everything is right so I'm a little concerned about that at this point so but other than that the air fuel ratio gauge is working correctly and let's do a first startup at this point let's do it boys and maybe ladies if you're watching so I already did it before so I am cheating but it heats up um, I didn't read the instructions whether you wait uh, I see it that it gets into the green so I'm assuming that's good to go really surprised that it's already at well it's above stoic it's rating pretty high I'm wondering if that's caused because of the cat that's still in the headers before the turbo I don't know that for a fact I will have to do some research to find that out but it only makes sense that it would read more towards story can not actually read accurate air fuel ratio because of that catalytic converter in there so Either way, I'm going to drive with it, run with it, and see what's going on. But, I mean, that's just the gist of how you plug this thing in. It's pretty simple. Now, uh, there are ways that you can wire this gauge so that you can actually data log it. And I definitely want to do that because it just makes it easier to tune it. I don't have a four-wheel drive dyno, but I would at least like to be able to street tune this thing for now. That's how I do it. Uh, I'm sure there's other ways to do it. Ask me any questions if you want it. Subscribe. Like it if you liked it. Let me know any things that you guys want to see later on. Other than that, check you guys later. Peace out.